Hey everyone, it's the Ionic Guy, and you might notice I'm in a different Ionic 5 today, and that's because this is a 2024 SEL all-wheel drive. This is the first one to hit the dealer lot here in my area. I'm currently at Key Hyundai of Manchester, Connecticut. They are my preferred dealer. I work with them for all my service. Great dealership all around, and I thank them for giving me the opportunity to spend some time in the 2024 SEL today. And the reason I wanted to check this car out today is this trim level, the SEL trim here in the United States, has the most amount of change for the 2024 model year. And in my opinion, most of it isn't for the better. Hyundai's clearly making a big business decision here by trying to improve their margins with the SEL. Now with the price decreasing $200, you are forfeiting a lot of features from the 2023 and especially from the 2022 that I personally own. So let's not waste any time. Let's take a look around this interior and I'll show you guys what's changed because most of the changes are here on the inside. The biggest change for 2024 is you no longer get the h -Tex synthetic leather seats. You now have the cloth seats as seen on the SE base model of the car. You also no longer get a armrest in the back with cup holders. So that is new for 2024. And looking at the seat backs, only the passenger seat gets the pocket on the back of it. Driver side no longer does. So if you got kids and they want to stick their stuff in that little pocket, they're going to fight to the death over that. So the removal of the seat back pocket and the armrest is taking place on the SE trim as well. So it starts there and it moves up to the SEL trim as well. Still using USB-A for 2024. They have not moved on to USB-C yet. You'll also notice here on the B pillar, there are no longer any air vents for rear seat passengers. Now I think that's a big miss because rear seat passengers deserve just as much comfort as front seat passengers. Now one of the other biggest changes for 2024 is all the door panels in the car are now hard plastic. They are not that soft kind of squishy material anymore that is a pleasure to rest your arm on. This is all just hard scratchy plastic. So another big downgrade for the 2024 model year. So let's step into the driver's seat of the car. Go ahead and turn it on. So just like the rear seat, up here on the front, all hard plastic, except for this lower section here, this is soft. But in my 2022 SEL, this lower armrest in the back seat is padded. You'll also find now that you don't get that interesting looking patterned material here anymore. It is prone to damage though, so I could take that or leave that. That's kind of a personal choice. This is definitely gonna be more durable being a hard plastic. Here in the center console, you also still have USB-A ports. Those have not changed to USB-C. And here in the front, the USB port for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay is still the same USB-A. Steering wheel is identical to the 2022 and 2023, nothing new there. Another big omission for 2024 is the fact that you no longer have ambient interior lighting. So all that cool lighting that you had on the door panels, on the front and rear doors, it's all gone for 2024. So if you are getting a 2024 SEL, I do recommend getting those little USB-A LED lights that you can change color. It just adds a little bit of nice ambiance to the interior of the car. You can still use my magnetic eyewear holder, seen here with my Ray-Bans, to keep your sunglasses stored. There's really no other good place in the car to store your sunglasses, so that's why I designed the magnetic eyewear holder. You can purchase these from my website, ionicguy.com, in the description of this video, or if you're international, from my Etsy store for $20. Now for 2024, there's also a Wi-Fi hotspot. You pay a little bit more for it per month, but then anybody in your car has a Wi-Fi connection. There is also something included called Hyundai Pay. I'm not finding it anywhere in the infotainment system, so I don't really know what it is. It's probably for paying for EV charging. Maybe that's coming in a future software update with the car. Um, I don't really know, but the data sheet did say it is included. So let's talk about these seats and the material they are made out of. I've never really spent any time in the SE trim of the Ionic 5. Um, on first blush, the texture isn't horrible. I feel like the side bolsters in this particular car now are a little looser, a little opened up versus my 2022 SEL and probably the 2023 SEL. I actually do think these seats fit me just a little bit better than my 2022 SEL. So if you're a bigger person, this might be a good thing for you. The pattern up here near the headrest looks decent. 
The headrests do feel, yeah, they're about the same hardness as in the SEL from 2022 and 2023. Something to also keep in mind, if you were hoping to get a level one charger with this car like you used to, you can no longer do that. The SEL and SE no longer come with any charger or EVSE standard from the factory. That's something you're gonna have to go buy now. Now you do gain a few things for the 2024 model year. The first thing, you get haptic in the steering wheel. So haptics mean the steering wheel is gonna vibrate when you start drifting out of your lane or if there's a imminent crash or something, just to give you a warning through your hands so you really know to prepare yourself. In the back seat, there's more airbags now and the outboard seats do have pre-tensioners for the seat belts. So previously the front seats only had those. Now all four main seats of the car have pre-tensioners for the event of a crash. So the biggest change you are gonna find on the exterior of the car is the mirrors are not folded. And that is because it no longer has folding mirrors. Something I did wanna check out with the charge pour was to see if I could notice any differences for the 24 model year and it looks to be exactly the same as the 2023 and 2022. So we'll have to wait and see if this still has the overheating charge port issue, just like 2022 and 2023. Unfortunately for the new model year, they also didn't get rid of the low conductivity coolant. So after 35,000 miles, you have to get this flushed and that is gonna be an expense that something like the Ionic 6 isn't going to thrust upon you. No change at all to the front trunk area either. So those are all the changes for the 2024 model year. I'm disappointed in these changes, but Hyundai's gonna do what Hyundai's gonna do. They're trying to obviously push people towards the limited trim, which most likely has bigger margins than the SEL did. So they're trying to get their margins a little bit bigger so they're not losing as much with every single sale of these cars. You gotta remember, they're heavily discounting these cars, so they're already losing a lot of money on that front as well. So on top of not making a ton of money with the manufacturing and design of this car, they're also losing it on the sales front too. So they had to make a mission somewhere. I guess they picked these as being the least desirable things that people wanted in the SEL trim. I kind of beg to differ some of them, but hey, that's my opinion. I'm hopefully gonna check out an SE trim and a limited trim in the near future because the limited trim does have the new digital rear view mirror, which I'm interested in testing out because I've heard a lot of people say that it makes them get motion sickness. So if you guys are interested in seeing those in the near future, make sure you're subscribed. Now, if you haven't already seen my 18 month review of my Ionic 5, be sure to check that out right here. It's a big deep dive into the car and what it's like to live with. So thanks for watching. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.